Hello! Welcome to this tutorial, which will teach you how to export your spore creatures from Spore, import the creature model into Blender, and how to assign the textures. You won't need any previous experience with Blender to get through this tutorial, but for your convenience I really recommend you to check out some basic tutorials so you can learn how to navigate Blender as it can be a bit overwhelming. I also won't explain how to create a backdrop or create additional lighting, so I would recommend checking out tutorials for those as well. I'll link some in the description below and you can also just drop a question in the comments and I'll try to help you out. Now that that's out of the way, let me just explain why you would want to import spore creations into Blender. In Blender you can do many different things, you can animate, make short movies, edit the model if you so wish, make renders, and you can also send them up for 3D printing. So all in all, you can simply do more things with your spore creatures. Personally, I use it for making prettier renders since the graphics in game are simply put pretty bad and low resolution. Here are the things you'll need for this tutorial. Links to any downloads will be in the description. A fully updated version of Spore with the latest patch installed. Blender, at least version 2.77. And Adobe FBX Converter. And we're ready to start! Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open up the creation you want to use in the editor. And I should point this out that this only works for creatures, and uh, all types of creatures work. So you can have them like this one is in the outfit editor, or just a normal creature. I think it works on cells too, but sadly no buildings or vehicles. So the next thing we want to do is that we want to go here into paint mode and wait for our creature to get painted. And then we press Ctrl, Shift, and C. And then we want to type in Colada Export. And there we go! So, now we're actually done with Spore. Uh, and we're gonna shut this down and open up the next program. Alright, so the next program we want is the Adobe FBX Converter. And another thing you want is the folder where your creature is. And as you can see, it's like uh, in the computer. It's in the computer, what a surprise, no, <laughs> but you know, my computer, documents, my sport creations, and creatures, it's where it should be. And then you'll want to find the name of the creature and uh, the ending .dae. So we want to grab this file and put it here. And then we're gonna make sure that this looks like this and that the destination format is FBX 2013. So then we press convert down here and we have converted it. So the next thing we're gonna do is just remove this real quick. And then we're gonna go back into the folder and as you can see there's now a new file which says the, basically the same thing but uh, with the ending FBX. So we're gonna drop this one here. It's, it's a two-way thing, uh, two-step thing, and then we want to choose OBG in this drop-down menu. And we want to make sure that triangulate and bake deformations is ticked in. Then we're just gonna convert it again. And we're done with the FBX converter, so we can shut it down. Just gonna say that you can technically skip this step with the FBX converter, but if you do so, the creation model is going to be kind of deformed, as you can see here in this picture, where I provided a picture of a creation that was converted and one that wasn't converted. And now we're going to open up Blender, and here comes the most complicated part of the whole process. So the first thing you want to do is just, is just click to get rid of this menu. Boom. And like I said, you really should check out some like basic navigation tutorials for Blender because it's kind of weird especially compared to the Spore editor, if that's the only thing you're used to. So the next step is to remove this box in the middle, unless you really want to have a box in your picture, which, I mean, whatever. But I'm gonna remove it by box, so I just press X and delete. Okay, and then we want to go up here into File and Import. And in this menu we choose OBG, Wavefront. And then we navigate to the folder that we previously were in and uh, find the creature that is called UBD Two-Face in my case. Ignore any weird names I have in my creatures, okay? I, I get bored easily. 
Um, okay, so now we have it. Um, and as you can see, it's kind of lying down. So unless you want this perspective on your render or whatever you're gonna do, you might wanna rotate it back up. What you're gonna do then is press R, X, 270, and left click. Ta-da! So what we want to do is first we just wanna get rid of this menu to the left. So we're gonna press T. It's not super important, but I like to keep it more clean. Um, and then we're gonna like click down here um, and then you want to drag it upwards. And one more thing that is very important is that we, we're going to go up here where it says Blender Render, which is right to the left of the little Blender icon. And we're going to select Cycles Render. Okay, so now we want to go down here to the left where there's a little clock thingy in the very low left corner. And we want to select Node Editor. The next step is to right-click on the creature and then we want to go into this right-hand menu where you see all of these little icons and we want to press the orb which has like a checker texture on it and here is, here is this asset material and if we go down here into the menu you'll see use nodes and we want to click this because then this will appear in our node uh, part of the screen. And here is where we'll build our node tree or node map, which is going to be the most difficult and complicated part. You can move these around just by left clicking. Uh, you can also pull these connections by left clicking, as you can see. Right, so. Now, I'm just gonna look at my reference picture for this because it's quite a complicated node map. Alright, so the first thing we want to do in the node editor is to press Shift and A to get up this little add menu. You can also go down here and you'll see the same thing. But just because it's faster, I'm gonna use Shift and A. So what you're gonna want first is something called a mix shader. And that thing you want to put here. I'm not going to explain why you need all of these because it's going to take too long and I'm trying to keep this tutorial short. Just accept that you'll need this for whatever reason. And then you want to drag from this little green dot that says BSDF and go into the shader here on the mix shader. And you also want to connect this to the surface. And then we want to add something that is called a glossy BSDF. And that is something that we have here, under the shader menu. And we're gonna add this one down there. Now, the next thing we want to do is add our first image texture. So we're gonna go up a little bit here by just rolling the slider. And we're gonna press Shift A and go into texture and image texture. And what we're going to want to do with this one is we're going to drag from this little yellow dot into the FAC slider on the mixed shader. You can move these around however you want. It doesn't affect anything as long as the connections are the same. That's what's the most important. Now we're going to choose texture for this one. So we're just going to go into the open thing here. And we're going to want to navigate to the folder. That the creature was in. And once again, ignore the weird names for my creatures, okay? I swear I am a normal human being. Um, and once you find the textures, you can see them here. You have a diffuse, normal, and specular. And for this particular one, we're gonna use the specular one. That's very important. So, we now have our specular texture in the image texture node that is up here. And in this little menu you have here to the right, which you can toggle by pressing N, you're gonna deselect use alpha. And that is very important because otherwise it's gonna look weird and just not what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so now we have the specular texture and next we're gonna add what is known as the diffuse texture. So once again we're gonna press shift A, 
go into the texture and select image texture. And this one, we're going to drag the yellow dot into the yellow dot of this one and to the yellow dot of this one. And we're going to go into open image, navigate to the same folder, and use the texture that says diffuse at the end. And once again, we're going to deselect use alpha. So now we only have one texture left, which happens to be one of the ones that needs the most nodes. So for this one, we're going to need a normal map, which you'll find in vector. So you're going to select normal map. And you want to drag the little blue dot here to the blue dot of that one and to the blue dot of that one. And then we're going to once again select an image texture, put it here, pull the color into color, and then we're going to go into open, the same process, and find the one that says normal. And this like gives alpha. Another thing we want to do is that we want to go up to the one here, the specular texture, and select non-color data in the pop-down menu here. And we're going to do the same for the normal map one. Okay, so that's our node map. And if you've done correctly, it should work by now. I will provide a image of this so you can like check by yourself. Okay, and to make sure that it has worked, we can go up here again and uh, in this little menu here, where there's just a white circle, we can go and select Rendered. And here you'll see that the texture has been assigned. And it's looking kind of shiny and stuff, so that's good. Going back to Solid. Okay, so that was the most difficult part of this. And now we're pretty much done. Now you can just do whatever you want with your creature. Okay, so now we're gonna take a picture of this little monster here. And to do that, we're obviously gonna have to aim the camera at it. So what you can do is you can right click on the camera and then you can press down G and you'll move it. You can also use the little directional arrows to move it around. Just left clicking on them and holding down. So I'm just going to do something really simple and put it here. To rotate the camera, you can go here where you see there's like blue, there's a blue arrow and like some different shapes. You can go here and select the like round one, the curved one. Yes. Uh, and then you can kind of do this and try to like rotate the camera however you want to. I have to admit that this is like really wonky. Yeah, so fiddle around with that until you've got a shot that you like. You can see what the shot's gonna look like by pressing zero. The area within the orange border is what the image is gonna look like. Okay, so once you've found a shot that you like, we're gonna go into the camera settings, or the rendering settings. And that is the camera icon here in the right hand menu with the little icons. So by default, the resolution is pretty low. You'll see that it says 1920 by 1080, but it's down to 50%, which means it's only going to be half of that. So we're just going to jank this up to 100. And that is going to give us a picture with these resolutions. And then we're going to want to go down into sampling, which is this menu. There's a lot of menus, I know. And what we're going to do is that we're going to turn up the render samples to uh, something like 400. If you have a like slow computer, you might want to settle for something less than 400 because it can take quite a while. Once we've set the render samples and the resolution, we are ready to go. And we're just we can also select the file type here if you want something else than PNG. There's also JPEG and yeah, pretty much anything you like. Another thing you want to do before you render is to go into the world. Uh, options and select the white for the background color because otherwise it's going to be some gray color which might not be as nice but i think that white usually looks good you can pick whatever color you like but white makes it stand out the most 
Also, this is just before when you don't have any other lighting, because if I were to pick black now, you wouldn't see anything. I guess there's one light here, but uh, yeah, it's pretty weak, so you won't really see much with it. If you're just following my steps here and not adding any other sort of scenery, just set it to white and it works pretty well. Now that we got everything set, we're just gonna press F12. Or you can also just click on render, but yeah. And once it's finished rendering, you have your picture! Yay! So I really hope you liked this tutorial. Let me know if you want me to make any more in-depth Blender tutorials explaining like how to set up a scene and add nice, some nice lighting and stuff like that. I'm not super good at it, but I at least know the basics. So if you want to hear it from me and like specifically geared against towards poor creatures, just let me know. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you might want to subscribe. I mostly make sport creation time lapses, but I also sometimes do tutorials and some other stuff. So have a nice day and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!